welcome. I'm Pauline from PQW. I want to explain to you a lot about my Quilt As You Go book. This has been such a popular book. I wrote it some years ago, but we have been to many, many reprints and we've just done a new reprint of it just in the last week. So it is very, very popular. I just want to explain some of the things in it. Now, we're just going to show you around my sewing studio. So you can see all the quilts that I have here, they've all been made using one or two or more of the techniques in my Quilt As You Go book. I only ever make my quilts Quilt As You Go these days. I work on a very small domestic machine. You can see we've got lots and lots of quilts and many, many more. They are so easy to make. So if you are a person that just does not like quilting a big quilt on your small domestic machine, please give my Quilt As You Go techniques a go. My book has no patterns in it. It is a handbook. Now, as we go through the book, I'll explain a few things to you. And then I'm going to show you just briefly two of the techniques that are in the book and some different sashings that you can make. I've dedicated the book to some very dear friends um, that have helped me in my quilting career along the way and to my dear husband, who's been very supportive to me, how we change over the years. But we do an introduction and then I do go in and mentioning a little bit about the benefits of Quilt As You Go. And I think you'll appreciate if you've never done one before, once you start working on a Quilt As You Go quilt, it is so easy. Now, my method's not the only way of doing it. There's many, many, many methods out there. But I think once you get started with our technique, you'll find out that it's very hard to tell that the quilts are Quilt As You Go. I go through all the different tools that I recommend and use that make the job very, very easy. It took me a long time to find the right tools. A lot about quilting, how you can quilt your individual blocks, how we quilt the borders before we join them onto the quilt. You will notice throughout the book there's going to be a few spare pages. Now, I've purposely put this in the book and I've called the book a handbook because I would like for you to write your own notes as you go through making your quilts because we're going to talk about different size sashings, how you calculate the sizes and what seam allowance you're going to use for different things, how to move your needle position over to get the right seam allowance. You need to write all of that down in, in your own little handbook so that every time you make a quilt you don't have to keep going and figuring that out. When I came up with my Quilt As You Go techniques, I designed the sasha tools. And these are the set of 10. We have 20 different sizes in our range now, but these are the most popular 10. So you can buy them as a set, you can purchase them individually. But if you purchase the 10 in the set and you get to use these and see how brilliant they are, you can buy the other 10 as an additional set that you would then have the 20 because once you start working on Quilt As You Go, you realize that you can use any size sashing and any style of sashing. So a little bit about our, our um, sasha tools. I am the original designer of these tools. We now have a lot of people copying us. We've made them ours out of very high quality. I own the rights to these completely. I came up with the idea, but people think they can copy. And the ones that are copying, they're making them out of a very soft plastic. These are designed so that we put our fabrics through this and push this tool with the iron to give us a really nice folded sashing. When you use the rip off ones, let me tell you, as soon as you put the iron near them, they melt. So that's why I encourage you, please make sure you buy the sasha tools that have our registration data on them and it has our, our um, website on them and my name because they're using all my videos and everything to copy. So we go through and we show you different sashings that you can make, like sashings with a little flange or paper strip down the side. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Sashings with cornerstones, sashings with four patches. There's no um, limit to what you can do. Now, as we go through and I show you a couple of the different techniques, 
you need to know different measurements. So here is your cutting chart for the different techniques and the different methods we're going to use. We go through and I show you how I cut my fabric on the bias using my bias sasha ruler, which is a very handy tool. So we go through and step by step, we take you through the different techniques. We talk about free motion quilting, how to teach yourself that. Then we start with our back-to-back -back quilt as you go technique. Very, very simple to do. Great, great technique. We talk about how we flatten our seams. I talk about the right sort of batting to use or wadding so that we don't get any bulk at the seams. Where we do get bulk, I'll show you in the book and in my YouTube videos how to grade the bulk out. We show you the different feet to use on your machine, how to move your needle position over, how to join it all together. And then we go into another technique that I call between the block technique. We take you through that. We show you a bit of a photo gallery, more pages for notes. Then we get on to between the block. And I'm just going to quickly show you in this little video how to do this. But the book is going to have all the finer details in it that I can't present to you now. So go through step by step, write your own notes. When you get to the back, we talk about putting borders on. And then we give you a bit of a, a photo gallery, oops, where we get to that, of some of the different quilts that I've made using the different techniques. So it's all condensed into the book. But let me just explain a few things to you about joining them together. Now, if I'm going to make an applique quilt, which I love appliqueing, I always quilt the fabric first. So I put my three layers together. I use the Hobbs heirloom double-sided fusible batting. I iron the three layers together. I quilt the blocks and we do have a beautiful range of quilt as you go quilting templates that you can trace the design onto the fabric and quilt on the line. No stress with our quilting. And you can come up with beautiful shapes. Once you get all your applique done, and, and when you get into the book, I'll explain to you how you don't see the applique at the back of your block, even though we've quilted first, because we use the monopoly invisible thread in our bobbin. You don't see any of that blanket stitch on the back of your blocks. Do all the stitching there. When you want to use the back-to-back -back technique, you will trim your blocks up. You will then put your blocks wrong sides to wrong sides, back to back. You will use the seam allowance that I explained to you in the book. You will press the seam opened and you'll notice that it won't sit terribly flat and we do need it sitting flat. So to make that sit flat, I use, oops, the Roxanne glue basted. And I use this for all my applique as well instead of fusible web. We run this underneath the seam on both sides. We use a hot dry iron and the little mini irons are perfect for this. You set that seam down very flat. Once you get that done, you then decide what size and what style of sashing do I want to put over this. So let's just take you through a few of the ideas. Just get my ironing surface. I'm going to use the one inch sasher just to make a very, very, very basic sashing. Whatever measurement is written at the top of the sasher tool that you choose to use, you always cut your fabric double that measurement. So here we have a two inch wide strip. We fold in and in till it meets. And yes, I'm only working on a small strip, but as your quilt grows in size, you're going to need to make some great big long strips. So the sasher tool allows you to make a perfect straight sashing and you're not going to burn your fingers. Thread it up and over. Use a double fork pin, a twin pin. That's going to put equal tension on both sides of the fabric for you so we get no stretching. We cup up the sides. We have a little curve in the side of the sasha tool. That fits the side of any iron. And all we do is push. Just use your fingers as a bit of a guide. 
and there's your sashing strip made. So, so simple. Once you get that done, you simply align this raw edge here with the centre of this seam and you put it over the top of the seam. You would use your Roxanne glue baste it, you would glue underneath, press it with the iron and then you go and sit, stitch really close on each edge. And all of it is explained in the book. But to make some different other sashings, you might want to do something that's a little bit wider and you might put that on there and think, oh, I don't know whether I really like that or not. Why not make another one and put over the top? Instantly, it comes alive. I call this a double up. You might want to make up some sashings before you start laying them down. Do a triple up. Look at that. How beautiful is that? It really starts to make the quilt pop. Like, I'm not going to stitch this down. It can become like a little flap. I've stitched the yellow onto the orange, made it up as a set. Then I'll glue that in place and I'll just stitch either side of the green. So, so simple. This one here, we've used up some of the bits left over. We've cut some rectangles, joined them together with a quarter inch seam, put them through the appropriate size sasha tool. And you can see the sasha tool gives you a lovely permanent crease so that it's always going to stay folded as it should. Glue this into place and then you've got a lovely scrappy sashing. And how nice does that look? So it's all explained for you. It just takes all the pain out of doing really, really nice quilts. Here we've made a wider sashing. We've used the two and a half inch wide sasher tool. We've done some applique on it first, stitched all this down, and then we're going to stitch that over the seam. So I'll just come and stitch really close on the edge. And using the Monopoly invisible thread, you don't really see the stitching. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but you'd hardly see that this has been stitched. You can't see the thread. And I use the Monopoly so I hide the stitching. And also it means I'm not having to worry about matching the thread colour perfect. And I'm not having to change threads all the time. Makes it too, too easy. Now you might want to do a... a join your blocks together like this and you might think that it needs something a little bit of a pizzazz happening to it. What we've done here is we've joined two pieces together. Two pieces together just with a quarter inch seam. We've then put that through the tool and folded it. I would put this down and I would join all of my blocks together, all my rows together like this till I got them all done. Then I would come back and join the next row to here this is where it'll get a little bit bulky, so in my book I explain how to grade that out. Then we come and make up another unit, and then we can put this across, and now we've got a double sashing with a four patch. And look how spectacular that will make that look. It just makes your quilts pop. You just do not have to make your quilts quilt as you go with a boring one inch sashing. You can dress them up to make them look gorgeous. But let's do a little um, sashing with a little peeper strip on it. So here I've got some one inch wide strips cut. I'm going to fold it in half and I put this through the half inch sasher tool. Now I just need to get mine out. So we just Hold it again. Now, if you're doing a very big quilt and you're going to do a sashing with a little flange or peeper down each side, you're probably going to have to have lots and lots of um, fabric to fold in half. And certainly if you're going to stand at the ironing board and fold this and press without the tool, you will burn your fingers. And that's what I was doing one day when I was making my first quilt as you go quilt. I wanted to have a tiny little flange down the side of a one inch wide sashing. I hadn't yet invented the sasha tools, but by the time doing all those strips, I really nearly had blisters on my fingers. That was the day I designed this tool. I needed to, to stop myself burning when I was doing this sort of thing. Pin with your double pin, hold the fabric so it stays very straight, 
and we just push with the iron. And that will fold your fabric in half for you perfectly. So make all of those up. Then cut your sashing to the size you want it to be. In my book, I will tell you what measurements to use because you're not cutting this fabric double, but you need to know exactly what size to cut it. Sew your little strips down each side with a quarter inch seam. Do press the stitching line because you'll know some threads do stretch. So press, turn it over and press the other side. Then we're going to fold this out and fold this out. Press the start. Now if you've ever done this sort of thing before and you have to do a lot of it, you know how tricky it is to get all of this sitting out properly. If we use the appropriate size sasha, which is going to be a two and a half inch wide tool, we go in and over. And this is where it gets very, very exciting and really cool to do. Now we're going to use two of the double pins because we want to pin the purple and the pink. If I use two separate pins here, I find that pinning them in separately, I get different tension. Using the double fork pin, which we use for piecing our blocks together, it puts perfect equal tension on both sides. So we don't have to worry about anything stretching. Hold this, put the iron into the groove and you push with the iron. And I think you'll agree that there's nothing more simple than doing this. And that then turns your little paper strip out, turns the seam to the inside, to the sashing, and you've got your beautiful little paper strip coming down both sides. And then you just simply put this, glue it in place, and then you stitch right in the ditch. Use your monopoly thread and stitch in the ditch and make spectacular feature to your quilt. So that's just a little bit on the back-to-back -back technique. But you can use any style of sashing. That is your choice. But if we want to join pieced blocks together, where we're going to work with a block that has a quarter inch seam, like we have here. We've got our blocks made. We've got, we've got to be careful of our quarter inch points. So we've made these blocks, we've put the backing to them, we've ironed the three layers together with the Hobbs fusible batting, and we've quilted. So you can do whatever sort of quilting you want. Now, when you're ready to join these blocks together, you need to decide what size sashing do you want to put between the blocks. So let's say I want to do a two inch wide sashing to join these two blocks together. The first thing I need to do is cut a piece of my backing fabric two and a half inches wide. But if you've got a lot of fabrics left over from other projects, you don't have to use the same fabric on the back of each block. And that strip you're cutting to join the blocks together, I call that a spacer strip. It doesn't have to be the same color as your backing. On this one, we've done it the same color. So we've cut a strip of fabric two and a half inches wide and we've joined it between the two blocks with our quarter inch seam. And I call this a spacer strip. So we just simply sew it on with our quarter inch seam, matching our points perfect. So when you sew this down, make sure you sew with your points facing up to you so you can see those points. Join both blocks together, and this is what the back would look like. So if you had different fabrics on the back of each block, it would be a totally reversible quilt. You could have all of these spacer strips being the one colour and all the block backs being different colour. Look fantastic. Once you get that done, you then make your sashing, as we've done before. This has gone cut four inches wide. I've put it through the two inch sasher tool. Now I need to cut a piece of my batting, the same batting that I've used in my blocks. I want to cut it just a little bit narrower than my finished sashing. I don't want it to be exactly the same size because what I need to do is open this out 
and I need to lay this inside. Now, if I had the, sash, the batting coming right to the edge, I run the risk of losing this lovely straight line. It'll, the bulk of the batting will push it away. So all we do now is press, and that holds the batting in place perfectly for us. We use our Roxanne glue, we run a line of glue down each side, and we align up so we're matching our points absolutely perfect. This is where you can do a bit of fudging. You'll get perfect, perfect points. Glue this side and press it to hold it in place and then pull this side out so you're matching your points perfectly there. Glue it and press it and then you're going to stitch right on the edge with your monopoly thread. The back of the quilt will be absolutely perfect. Some other ideas if you want to do some, you know, different styles of um, sashings. This is not the right colour combination for these blocks, but just to give you a little example, I've pieced some triangles together, but I've made them a little bit wider than what they normally would be, doing regular triangles, because what I'm going to do is fold back to the point, put this through the sasher tool, which it'll run through those seams beautifully for you, then you can Fill that with wadding. Don't forget to put your wadding in here. And you put that over the top. And you can make a gorgeous, gorgeous pieced sashing to go between some interesting blocks. The other way we could do this, we can start out by cutting our sashing piece. We can make some squares up. We can sew on the diagonal. I trim this back to a quarter of an inch. Then I put the next square on, trim it back, so it looks like so. Then we fold this and put it through the sasher tool. Let's get some of these out of the road. We put it through the sasher tool. We fill it with the wadding. Don't forget to put your wadding inside. Then we put that over the block. Just stitch it on with your monopoly thread right on the edge. You could then come back and quilt this if you wanted to. You could do some lines just to integrate that with the quilting you already done. Then you're going to make up your units to join your rows together simply by doing this style. So you're putting your triangles on the corners, you're putting a rectangle between, you're putting that through the sasher tool Fill it with your batting and then you're creating the beautiful stars. So many different techniques that you can learn from us. But the basics of the book is giving you the instructions of how to join the blocks together. It's not just about joining the blocks, there's little lots of tips in about joining your rows so all your sashings come out exactly running through the quilt level then there's the different ways that we can join our borders to the quilts. It's not just one way of joining the borders to your quilt, quilts you go. There's many different ways of joining it. So it's all covered in the book. So I want to introduce you to my Quilt As You Go handbook and to my set of 10 sashes. And I really hope that you will have a look at our website. It's pqw.com.au. Have a look around for all the tools that we use to create our quilts quilt as you go. Have a look at all the different quilt patterns that we have that are quilt as you go. There's many, many, many that we design up specially for quilt as you go. And we do have the brilliant set of quilt as you go quilting templates, lots of different shapes that you can quilt onto your blocks. So subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already subscribed. Hit that bell so every time we put a new video out, we want you to know about it. But we'll be showing you all these different sashings in different videos. We'll be showing you how to quilt your little blocks, how to quilt your borders on your little domestic machine. So stay in touch with us and hope you enjoy. Have a look at our website. They're all there. They're ready for you to purchase. Enjoy your quilt as you go journey and bye for now.